have four verified cases of COVID-19 in New Haven and uh, New Haven residents, and one uh, suspected case. The COVID-19 pandemic has caused the most significant disruption to the worldwide sporting calendar since World War II. Across the world and to varying degrees, sports events have been canceled or postponed. Spectators have no games to watch and players no games to play. New Haven Public Schools athletics was not an exception. The guidelines on sports in schools issued by various authorities suspended, restricted, and sometimes canceled sports activities. We're now here in the Athletic Center's main arena, 80,000 square feet of open space, where at one time prior to the COVID, we had thousands of people here cheering on student athletes, running, competing. We're so loud in the arena with the cheerleaders and the band playing that you couldn't hear yourself speak. Everything went dead. Streets, stores, public venues, parks, and beaches. An ominous cloud of uncertainty moved onto the horizon and rained there for months. A new reality started setting in. Wearing masks in public, carrying sanitizers, maintaining social distancing. How did we all survive? What were the losses? What were the gains? What did we learn? We asked our community members these questions, and their answers in this film is a collective attempt to reflect on what happened to all of us in the year of the pandemic. At the time that the um, pandemic started, my brother had a baby, so we was just more concerned about their health than ourselves. I wasn't scared. Um, for the first two weeks, I was I was I was happy. Um, I was able to like get a little bit of rest, but then it kept going, and we had to start doing online school for the re remaining of the year and. I didn't really like that. I was able to go practice like almost every day during the mornings or like right after school. And I also was able to get a job during the pandemic, something that I wouldn't have gotten if I was if there wasn't any pandemic because I would have been too busy playing baseball. So during the pandemic, um, with the time off, I was able to work. Everything just came to a halt. So it was kind of a complete shock ordeal where I woke up and said, uh, we are done. And uh, something I never thought we'd ever see where in the midst of a basketball season and indoor track getting ready for regionals was completely shut down. I did feel scared not knowing what was coming our way, being a father of two children, um, hearing rumors and reading the news and reading all the different things. 
I tried to research on it as much as I could and protect myself as much as I could to go to the grocery store, to follow the proper guidelines, to limit, obviously, doing anything in public, and just having the necessities in my home to survive and take it a day by day. And you just have that um, empty feeling later on where you can't look back and figure out what happened and, and, you know, and just a tremendous loss. <clears throat> As a life experience, it means to me tremendously uh, to not take anything for granted and to when we do get back to normal times to enjoy it as much as possible and uh, to whether it's competing, attending a live event, um, doing anything out in the public that you once did all the time that you didn't really appreciate and now you very much so will due to where we've been over the last you know, 15 months. I think at times we definitely need a pause in regards to things can get really hectic for a lot of people, whether it's work, personal, catching up on things, uh, a chance to just hit the reset button and 100% just pause at the moment so you make the best decision you can make for yourself or your family. Approach each day with that, you know, tomorrow is not guaranteed and that to enjoy each day and do the best you can at your jobs and the best you can with your uh, family. It was a chaos, first of all. Of course, I was worried about pandemic and um, I was anticipating how the reaction of the public is gonna go and it went exactly how I thought it was gonna go, unfortunately. Yes, let's get you ready for the meet today. Okay. Most of that would I would I would address it to isolation. Being isolated, we, we're the social creatures. We my job especially is extremely social, um, and suddenly being cut off from all my friends and family and my coworkers and my students. Um, I'm an adult, so I can handle it a little bit better. I can only imagine what uh, the kids had to go through. Um, I was observing my son being plucked from his uh, kindergarten class, and that was that was pretty rough. Uh, well, this pandemic actually has quite a few meanings to me personally. Um, one is the Earth uh, is telling us. Like, guys, you need to slow down and take a look around. Look what you have done and look how well I can do without you. We as humans really have to take a good look on what we have done to ourselves, how we live, um, what is important to us. And uh, this time we have spent in a lockdown with our families. What have we learned? Um, this is, there was an amazing time we had opportunity to spend with our families. and realize what's important and how much precious time we don't get to get we don't get to have with our loved ones uh, i think for most people it was more than one pause and more than one thing to think about and value things differently and to get really true value of things and rethink things and uh, reconnect on a different level Most of us really had to find out who we really are, truly inside, take a breather and think and find who we are inside, like truly, um, because we don't get the luxury of time to truly sit with ourselves. 
um, to take time a day to meditate and deeply look in, into ourselves um, to try to understand the loved ones uh, the ones who are near you, the spouse, children um, parents, whoever um, this is, I think it's a deepening moment and uh, like a window into your soul, if you will it's an opportunity going to last in terms of athletics and in the school environment our basketball teams were doing really well and we were preparing um, for the baseball season and we were looking to have a, a pretty uh, good baseball season um, with our group of kids that have been working really hard I was just you know puzzled by it you know I just did didn't know how long it would last I didn't it didn't affect me personally, you know, I you had the guidelines, um, you know, I kept to it because I, I took it seriously, but um, sort of, yeah, I, I wasn't scared. 170 feet per minute, um, but the same type of work that everybody's doing at home that aren't here, they're designing a program, we just designed a program. Each station had a leader, and we had several leaders, we had about eight different leaders today, exercises on what to do. That's how you design your own fitness program. You know, it, mentally, it, it's tough for you to be sitting there, um, you know, and just adjust to just sitting and watching TV or trying to teach on a, on a computer while, you know, kids are adapting to that and adults are adapting to that. family and we, we found to find ourselves turning the news on more often uh, in the first four or five weeks and then we ended up having to phase that out because it wasn't any it was just a lot of repetitive stuff and my biggest news was just if we were going to be able to play sports again um, for the school year and for moving forward if we we're going to be able to come back to school. I don't think we need pauses in our lives I just think that we need um, to understand that stuff can happen and we have to have positive outcomes that will prevent uh, worse things from happening. Let's go, Keith! Get up, Keith! Get up, Keith! Let's go, 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 Keith! let us that's real. You know, we're still trying to find out what we're learning from this, you know. Fortunately, we're, we're making strides to get back to normal, um, you know, but we're all still trying to figure out what we're learning from this. anything else because we had uh, Wilbur Cross's basketball team had just won the SEC in two playoff games um, in the state tournament. I assumed they were going to probably make a run to go to Mohegan Sun and not knowing the severity of the pandemic, I think I was more upset than anything else that, you know, they were going to stop the state tournament in the middle of it um, and take that opportunity away from our kids. Um, but I also believe that, you know, it was going to be if everyone locked down for a couple weeks or two or three weeks, everything would just go back to normal. Um, so I didn't, 
probably understand the severity of the impact that was to come because of it. Like I said, my thought was that this would be a temporary thing, a couple of weeks. Um, and then when it went beyond that and, and it started to, you know, as you watched the news or listened to the radio, what was going on every day and realized this was going to become something more, I think my reaction was how could I, you know, help the district? You know, we became a warehouse uh, for the district here and we became a vaccine clinic here and then also the district um, needed help with the actual COVID work of quarantining people and, and making sure the schools were, uh, you know, people were, you know, on leave and when they could come back. So, I mean, I did have that opportunity to work with our health department um, and work with uh, Dr. White on, you know, ensuring safety in our schools and once our kids came back. So I definitely had the opportunity to do that. It was uh, way more than I ever imagined it be. It was all time consuming at one point, seven days a week. But, um, you know, it gave, at least for me, the, the feeling of I was doing something that helped the larger role of, of what we do and not just being, you know, locked into the departments that I, I oversee. The most impactful thing of this entire, you know, last 15 months was two things. It was one, observing the people who would, you know, take risk and put in extra work and do anything possible to ensure that, you know, um, that activities existed for our kids in a really difficult time. And that's like the people who coach, uh, the people in our league, the people who work in this facility. I, I feel like as a, as a department that we all really stepped up and went beyond our normal expectations to make sure things happen for our kids. to be a jog as if you're a warming up jog. Some of you are gonna have a hard time with this, but you've gotta mentally put yourself in a place where you're telling yourself you're not gonna give up. You're gonna do it the way it's to be done. But at the back end, what you do is you get the reward. So when we go to the meets, that's when you start the PR. hardest times you see either the very worst of people or the very best and you know in the people that we deal with as a as a department and in, in education I, I think we saw the really best and we made things happen that you know starting into it we thought would be impossible um, if you looked at their requirements to run an indoor you know track schedule um, there was a time where I was like you know tracks never gonna happen this year but you know through the track coaches and, and Bob Davis and you know the people in our league, we actually put together almost something that you know I thought would be impossible. Same with you know winter sports in general, basketball thought would never be able to happen. But you know we came up with this bubble concept, and I don't say me because it was a lot of people who contributed and, and had a vision to to make that happen.
one of the things I thought about a lot during and I guess after, even to now, is how quickly things could change and, and just break down and, um, you know, the norms that we have in our society and the norms that we have in, in education could change based on what's going on in the world in a heartbeat. And I think prior to COVID, we took all the stuff that we do as far as programming for our athletes and kids, uh, you know, is something that's always there and always would be there. So I think we kind of took it for granted. Um, I think a pause that we need in our life sometimes is to just step back and look at what's going on and, and take stock and, and, you know, appreciate the good and, and work on the bad and, you know, those sort of things. Um, but uh, a pause like that, like I said, there was definitely some benefits to it, but I think that the uh, negative of, of the impact on, you know, our students and our athletes was greater than the, you know, positive of people being able to have a pause. I guess the biggest thing I take from COVID is if, if something is that important, you could find a way to, to make it happen. I worked for, when I first came to New Haven, I worked for a guy, Bob Lamel, and what he taught me was find a way to say yes. And that advice he gave me, um, you know, got us through the, you know, pandemic and got us, you know, to have activities for our kids in, in the toughest of times. And just like in a fairy tale, the pandemic is coming to an end. School and sports are back. Restrictions are lifted. We will certainly remember this year. Filled with anguish, despair, pain, irritation. And maybe we'll eventually accept what happened to us. Accept all the pain and all the suffering, as they are integral parts of the experience called a human life. My friends, start making pauses in the words, pronouncing and falling silent over, so that the meaning of the verbs would sound better, deeper when they're slower. My friends, start making pauses in your ways and look around carefully and sober so that you wouldn't go astray and walk the wrong path twice in your endeavors. Oh, let's just make the silence all the day. We are too fond of our own speeches, and that is why we miserably fail to hear our friends when they're trying to reach us. And in this silence, we would see, of course, how far apart we were creating hurdles and dreaming we were riding on a horse. We just kept running pointlessly in circles. How we believed things happened on their own. How we considered ourselves the chosen expecting life would take the lucky turn and happiness would wait around the corner bestowed on us would be the lucky turn mm -hmm. 